Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. This might be a bit of a replay, a recap of a, something I did maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago now. But I've got a situation where I want, I got this old seat mount here that has, uh, slips into another one, has a regular pin that holds it in place. Um, this one's been around long enough and I'm heavy enough that it's actually taken this tube and mushed it out and it gets to a point where it actually won't come off, you know, won't come off there. I could grind it off again. But one thing I didn't care too much for about this one is it's a little noisy. Uh, not that the boat isn't noisy enough as it is, you know, it's not that big a deal, but I've just also, just also learned that I don't like to have my seat up on my casting deck bolted down. It's the ability to be able to move that from the casting deck so I can just go up there and stand if I want or place a seat there if I want uh, without having a special post that it fits into. Uh, and you gotta, when you do that, your special post has got to go in the special hole, right? And you can't just move that hole around. Well, what I'm getting ready to show you is what I do. And this is not for rough water use. When I say rough water use, Anything bigger, bigger than like two foot swells, you know, you might get yourself in a little trouble here. But I've had, for the past few years, I've had real good success using this this way. And I'm going to build a platform. So what I have is from Ocean South. I bought a, a new platform. And the reason I bought it is it goes from 15 to 18 to height adjustable. And just by pulling this lever up, it goes up or down. Plus it has a little bit of cushion to it. Not sure I really needed that. But I want to mount my Millennium B seat onto here. And I want to mount this onto a, something that I can put in the boat and not have to put any more holes in my boat. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, depending on if you have an older boat, you may not want to screw stuff out down into your floor. Uh, maybe your floor isn't quite as tough or maybe it won't hold a screw as well as it did when it was new. You know, you get some plywood and stuff that's several years old or, you know, I'm talking 10, 15, 20 years old may not take a screw quite as well. Well, what I'm getting ready to show you will not put any stress or strain on your floor. It'll actually displace the weight out better across your floor and keep you highly mobile. Now me, I like to, I like to have the number of uh, seats in the boat that match the number of people. If I'm by myself, I take out all the seats except one because it's just me. If there's two people, I got two seats. If there's three people, I put in three seats because what do you want to do? Have, I want to have maximum amount of room in my boat to move around, to get to my bait buckets, to get to my live well, to get to my whatever I'm doing, my tackle box, just to get down and sit down and drive. I want to keep it wide open. I like the, you know, all these houses are going with this open space, you know, design. Open air design, no walls. Well, that's what I feel about the seats. I like it open. So I do this. Here again, I've got this. All the links will be in the description below for everything I purchased except for the plywood. I've got some uh, quarter 20 by inch and a quarter long. These are flathead machine screws. They're Phillips flathead machine screw. And then I have some zinc plated prong, prong T-nuts. What these are designed to do is to go in to the wood at the bottom, you drill a through hole, put it on the wood at the bottom, you can put a screw down through the top and you got metal on metal thread connection with a washer that bites in and helps hold things. I'll show you a closer up view of how these work when we get to that point. The other thing you're going to need piece of plywood. This is two foot by two foot by three quarter inch thick. And it's one, two, three, four, five ply plywood. This is treated plywood. So it'll help, you know, I've had ones in the boat for years now. Don't, don't have any problem with them. I didn't paint them, seal them, do anything to them. And for what they cost, you can afford to remake them every 10 to 15 years if you need to. These this runs me for a two foot by four foot ready sheet, they're called. And you can buy just a two foot by two foot. Uh, but I want to make two of them. So I, I went ahead and bought a two, by, two foot by four foot, which is $24. So you got $12 wrapped up in here. You got about $10 in screws. We're up to 22 bucks. 
The seat post is one of the more expensive pieces. That was like $138. And then the Millennium B seat itself is actually uh, around $119 now. It used to be $99. You can get them a couple years ago. Now they're about $119. If you're watching this in the future, they're probably going to be $129 or $39 and then $49. Everything just keeps going up a little bit. I don't like it, but I try to shop the best way I can to get the best bargain, most bang for my buck. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take and make this thing round. Now, square would be fine. You could wrap your indoor outdoor cloth around it and it would be fine. And I, and I just gave a little bit of secret away. I wrapped this in indoor outdoor carpet. So it looks nice, but I also turned it into a two foot diameter circle first. And I got me a little fixture with a screw in it. And I'll find the center of the board. I'll put the screw in it and I've got a hole drilled in here so I can put it in there and then draw me a nice clean circle. And then we'll go to the bandsaw and cut it. So let's find center and then we'll commence the cutting. Now we got you a bird's eye view here. Like I said, this is 24, just under 24, so we'll mark just a hair under 12. Same way here, just a hair under 12. And that's center. Next order of business, run your screw far enough down that you can see when you're lined up on this little X right here that you just created. And then you can just Now I got something that'll spin in a nice circle for me. Then I'll stick my ballpoint pen in here. Now I got me a circle. We'll take this over the bandsaw and cut this out. Now we're ready to bandsaw. I'll go ahead and I'll make sure the volume is low so you don't hear, have to hear my band or my bandsaw and or my shop back screaming at the top of their lungs. And I'll squash that sound for you. Might even replace it with a little bit of music. We'll see.
Now that I have it cut out in a circle, I actually took it over my belt sander, just softened up these edges. Now I want to recenter. I want to center this up. I almost said recenter, but that means I would have to have it on center. It's like about seven and a quarter is my number. And the cool part, because it's round. You don't have to worry about the hole pattern here. We got a six hole pattern. I'm gonna take my same pen, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna make a little dot. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna play drill holes for this. This is just a little under 5 16 I'm using a 1964 drill bit. I'm gonna drill a hole right in there. All the way through. In all six spots. Once you have the holes drilled, we'll clean up all the splinters. That gives you some nice threaded holes, so when you go to bolt your seat down, it, uh, you can pull her down nice and tight without trying to ruin your wood. Next thing I do is I take my indoor outdoor carpet, and I go ahead and lay it down about like that. Give yourself about seven inches on each side. That's plenty. Then I go ahead and cut me a circle. Once you have it cut in a circle like this, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, and I'm gonna show you why here in just a minute. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over, and this is where things are gonna get sticky. I use 3M Super 77 spray for this whole job. No staple gun required, actually. And we're gonna coat this down. And I'm pretty liberal with this stuff. Once you got it coated like that, set that aside, let it dry for a minute. And we'll put a coating on our board. Don't worry about the sides, just get the top for now. Now I let this dry till it gets tacky. When you touch it, and it just has a little bit of tackiness to it, it doesn't just, it's not no longer a liquid. Depending on the humidity, may take longer some days than others. Come on, baby. There we go. Now she's tacky. We'll set this off to the side. We'll bring our carpet back over. Whoops. And then we'll just plop this down. Sort of kind of centerish. Just kind of eyeball it and get it centered. pretty good so now once you got that side you don't have to wait any time at all you can just get after the next step I get a fresh blade and my blade here my blade holder and I'm gonna start cutting pies around here and this is to ensure that things lay down flat for me so you're just cutting a bunch of triangles that are pointing toward the center. Just keep eyeballing your center and go, okay, there's center that way. So this is this is pointing toward the center. That's all you gotta do. And you're gonna do this all the way around. It's like you're making yourself a little sunshine. Now you see why I don't get too too worked up about how centered it is or how accurate this circle is compared to the other circle. And you'll drive yourself crazy and you spend a lot of time on something you're not gonna see. And yes, you can do this with scissors as well. And this is just some of that inexpensive indoor-outdoor carpet you buy at your local big box store. Sometimes they already sell them in like a 
six foot by eight foot roll. And the reason I'm keeping this in real time so you guys can see that a lot of the steps just don't take that long. Now I'll cut out for a minute when the, obviously when the glue's drying and, but other than that, we're talking three, four minutes. And the nice thing about this Super 77 is it stays tacky. And when it gets hooked up to something else that's tacky, it sticks really good. The other advantage to doing this without staples, eventually you're gonna get caught in the rain. And eventually all your stuff in your boat's gonna get soaking wet. Not to mention just humidity in general. It will rust your staples unless you use stainless steel staples in your staple gun. There we go. This is all garbage. Now, the main reason I'm wearing gloves in this part is because your hands do get pretty gross if you don't. So I'm spraying the wood part here. And keep in mind, I'm only spraying in as far as this reaches. Here I am, I'm worried about just the top part right now. I'm not worried about the edge yet. Once I'm satisfied with the coating that I put on the top, now we'll go play around the edges because now I'm gonna get the edge and these little sunshine points here. Now you notice I'm not, I don't have this hanging on the, where I'm spraying on the table over here because I wanna keep that clean. because my good carpet is down against it right now. Now, as you can see, everything's pretty well covered. Everything should stick really well. Now we'll do just like we did a little bit ago. So we'll let the glue become sticky. Once she gets pretty sticky, I only use one glove for grabbing the carpet here. Bring it over, pull it real tight, and just mash it down. And just do that all the way around. You're basically pulling these, oh, it sticks to itself pretty good. You're pulling these corners, just pull them towards the center of the circle. And as you can see, you can walk around it pretty quick. Then I go back in, I mash the, these down around the outside, it push, tightens them up really nice. Stick to the glove really good. Now that ain't coming up. No way, no how. Now the other thing you can do is take yourself a drill bit that'll just fit through this hole. Take your torch, heat it up good and hot. Once he's good and hot, let's poke her through. Now I just did it the whole size that fits through this threaded hole here. That finds me my holes. You can see them really easily here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go bigger because my holes, my bolts are bigger than that size. So I'm gonna go from this side now that I can see them, 
I can burn it from the other side. Now what I'm going to do is I got a bigger one and now that I can see the holes I'll heat this one up and I'll burn away all the material so it won't interfere with my screws when I'm trying to put them in. Once you see it turn blue that's about 500 degrees. And now I'm not going to be fighting the carpet when I try to put my bolts in. Bad part? Smells like a textile fire in here. Now that they're all burned in, should make it really easy for me to get in there and I can get that screw started without any interference, which is really, really nice. Now we can put our base back on and put the screws in it. And if I did an okay job of laying things out, I might actually be able to start them all in. If you do your calculations right, your bolts won't come through the bottom of your board. Looks like a few of these could be just a touch tighter. Because this one's sucked down really nice and flush. Let's see if I can get some other ones to come down nice and flush without stripping out. Something very satisfying about how that's coming out. Well, that came out perfect. Like I, like I planned it or something. <laughs> we know that didn't happen. We'll set this down. I'm going to take the old base off of here. Well, there it is in all its glory. Now, this was a 15 to 18 inch height adjustable. And that right there, that's pretty tall. I'm 6'1", used to be 6'2 when I was younger. But uh, that's like almost too high. My, it's hitting really heavy on my legs here. But I can whew, drop her down all the way to Chinatown. That's pretty good. But yeah, that's a... Uh... Now, I would not recommend this on a pedestal that was two feet tall. And the reason I say that is because it could get a little more tipsy. I would not recommend this being a boat that doesn't have decent side, side, size, height, depth sidewalls. I wouldn't recommend it there because, yeah, you gotta... I mean, I can lean clear over. You don't have to worry about this thing tipping over. It's got the circumference base of your office chair. If you ever measure the diameter of the five wheels on your office chair, it's this size. Why do you think it is that size? And these are, these are conference chairs that you can lean back in. That's because it's pretty stable for the size seat that they are. So I didn't go too, too far outside of that engineering. The only advantage I have now is there's no wheels on it. That's okay because no wheels means they're not gonna slide around the boat, right? Come on. But yeah, we're pretty tickled with how that turned out. This is a, I don't know if you guys have ever fished from, from these Millennium B seats. They're a mesh, like a woven mesh type of stuff. They're really strong. Uh, they're great for keeping your back cool. You know, you can be out on a hot day. I've been where I've been sweating. And next thing you know, it feels like my back got wet. But it's a cool breeze that comes through there that you can feel it. It actually makes it quite comfortable. You can actually sit in these seats literally almost all day fishing and getting up and down and here and there but you can sit in them and be comfortable all day they're really they're really really nice seats so i highly recommend them too links for everything i used in uh, this video will be in the description below i appreciate you guys watching we'll sit this in the boat 
and it's ready for my next go around to fishing. And uh, I think I got I got enough material to build one more platform, and uh, maybe I'll have a spare. You never know. You guys get out there and have some fun. This is Michael. Ah, oh, saying build it if you got it. No, that ain't it. Saying do unto others as nope. Nope. What is it? Oh, <laughs> if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you on the next video. You guys have a good one.